from the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hi, dear listeners, and welcome to another episode of Ropecast. Thank you for downloading us. Thank you for watching us. I'm Peter Tischer. And I'm Roger Charlton. And we're here today, if I got that correctly, to talk about dictionary use. Well, yes. Um, you remember, of course, that in our award ceremony, episode 100, I said in passing, that's the problem with dictionaries. I distinctly remember yeah. that, and dictionaries are a problem. Yeah. See, I was referring to two language dictionaries, which many people need. Uh, we're in Germany, so... Also called people... bilingual. That's right, yes. So mm -hmm. here in Germany, it would be German, English, English, German. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people use these dictionaries in a rather naive way and don't realize that it can lead into all kinds of difficulties. Definitely. Especially the online ones on top of that. There yes, are a few yeah. of those, like leo.org, which yeah. can be considered a bilingual online dictionary. Exactly. And that's used quite a lot by translators and interpreters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, a couple of examples from our award ceremony. You remember that we talked about um, Ministerpräsidentin, yeah. which some dictionaries simply uh, translate or transliterate as Minister President. Which doesn't work at we, all. We explained in our episode 100 the problem there. The thing is, what, what do you do if you are using a bilingual dictionary and you're given a kind of transliteration? Mm -hmm. You may be aware this isn't enough. Where do you look? And I think that's where step two might be to go to a learner's dictionary of English. Which would then be a monolingual exactly. dictionary, because so only English, for example. Now, especially the um, electronic versions of learner's dictionaries have a huge amount of cultural information as well, not just the, the words, but uh, the background to the words. So they're almost like encyclopedias. Yes, I guess you could say that. And they have example sentences, and they illustrate if there are differences between, say, British English, American English. Mm -hmm. So things that there is no room for in a bilingual dictionary, you may well find in the monolingual learner's dictionary. I can almost hear our listeners asking now, are there any that you would recommend? <laughs> I think when you, when you want to buy a dictionary, whether it's... Um, access to an online dictionary or buying a book, which usually comes with a disc anyway these days, a DVD probably, you, know, you need to test them if possible. And I think this is where you know, bookshops, bookstores still have some value. You can actually go in and you can thumb through the pages and you can see what it looks like and what information is in there. It's sometimes more difficult to do this online because to get access you actually have to pay something. But I would always recommend people to compare at least two different items, whether um, access or book or mm -hmm. disc. So how would I use such a monolingual dictionary, or how, how would I combine the use of these? Well, let's take an example from episode 100, the award ceremony. We talked there a little bit about the word Hochschule, and you correctly said this is a false friend with high school the dictionaries. I, I looked at, usually say college, semicolon, university. Right. So you would need to follow that up. What's the difference between a college and a university? And if you've got a good source of information, you'll find, well, it depends whether you're talking about the United States or the UK, for example. So this is where mm -hmm. it gets to be a little bit complicated, and you need that extra information if you want to really understand. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should tell our listeners now, though, what is the difference between a college and a university to you? Well, in Britain, a college is very often part of the university. That is, if you take Oxford, Cambridge, Durham, mm -hmm. called collegiate universities, then you belong to a college rather than the university. Okay, so it's almost like a faculty? <sighs> Not really, but that's some kind of but comparison. But a, sub a subdivision. But it's still more complicated than that. We don't want to go into all the details okay. now, I think. Whereas in the United States, very often a college is sort of the first stage yeah. of higher education, yeah. and you go on to university. Although hmm, it's not as simple as that in <laughs> no. the U.S. either. But then you've got things like, um, if you look up the word Kanzlei, mm -hmm. which we dealt with, 
Mm -hmm. Then you will find, for example, chancellery, and we mentioned that could be a problem. Or if you look at, um, to take examples that are not in our episode 100, calendar, the mm -hmm. German word, and you think, oh, calendar, let's just check, look in the dictionary, what do you see? Calendar. Mm -hmm. But a German would use the word for what I would call a diary as well. Mm -hmm. So here too, you need to be very careful with your dictionary. Or even an agenda. Right, could be. That's where you put in important meetings and all that. Yeah. That's not on my, I have to put this in my agenda. So let's just finish with a couple of pieces of advice for our listeners. One would be, if you use a bilingual dictionary, which most of us do. I do too. Don't think that you found the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Definitely are, not. You also need more information. Right. And secondly, don't assume that you know what a word means. Because, of course, there are many, many false friends, not just between German and English, but other languages too. Always be a little bit suspicious about word meanings and check. I think that's a good piece of advice. But that must keep you from loving words. No, we both love words, don't we? Ah, yeah, definitely. And I hope our listeners do too. So, bye for now. Hope you listen to us again in two weeks' time when we'll have another episode of Robcast. Bye from me too. You've been listening to Robcast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.